anyone who might have been confused. Okay, so now for drawing. Um, it's a little bit harder just because of what I mentioned as well is the fact that we need to figure out the distance between each x value and each y value. So when we're drawing something in pi game, it draws in the top left hand corner uh, of the object. So if we draw a cube, we're drawing that in the top left. Um, so we need to figure out what that x and y value is going to be for each cube when we're drawing it to the screen. So I'm just going to call this gap here that is going to be our distance. And then the same thing, self.w by self.rows. And we're going to change w and rows um, down in our program later. But we can actually just type it in now um, like this, so 500 and 200, just so we have that set. OK, so self.w, answer divided by self.rows. Again, that's the same thing we did when we were drawing the grid to figure out the distance between our x and y values. OK, we're going to say i is equal to self.pause here. This is going to save us a bit of typing in our function here, or in our method. We're just going to say j.self.pause1. So we're just saying i, which stands for row, j stands for column, um, like a classic like convention for it, uh, so that we don't have to keep typing pause zero, pause one when we move. Okay, so the next one, next thing we need to do is now draw a rectangle. We're gonna say pi game dot draw dot rect like this, and then we need a surface. We need a color, so self dot color, and then we need a rect. And here is a little bit of math. I'm just gonna type it and I'll go through exactly what what it does. J multiplied by Dis plus one, dis minus two, dis minus two. Okay, so the reason I have these little plus ones and these minus twos here is just so you can still see the grid when we draw the rectangle. Um, because if we were to draw with exactly the dimensions of this distance, um, then what would end up happening is we'd cover the white lines of the grid and it just looks kind of weird if you can't see the white lines. Um, so that's why I have plus one added here and minus two just so we're drawn inside of the uh, the circle or inside of the square a little bit and you'll see that in a second so what I'm simply doing is I'm multiplying my I value um, which is going to be my current like row column by the distance that we need to get to the next one and then same thing for J uh, and then these little add ones minus twos is just to make sure that we stay inside so a quick quick example if you don't understand is say we're in a position zero zero so our I is zero and our J is zero we're gonna say I multiplied by distance, let's say distance is like 40. Okay, so zero multiplied by 40, zero. Zero multiplied by 40, zero. So our position is zero, zero, and that's correct because if we're drawing in the top left hand corner here and we're in position zero, zero, then that's where we should draw. Again, if you go something like zero, 10, uh, and you or and you move down, I guess, so 10, you're moving Y down, uh, you're gonna say zero minus distance, zero, and you're gonna say 10 multiplied by distance, let's say it's 40, then we move to that correct position uh, down the screen. So this is rectangle x, y width height. Okay, makes sense. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to draw the eyes. Now, you can skip this part if you want. I'm just gonna copy it in because it's a little bit of math to make it them like perfectly aligned on the square. Um, but yeah, so we say if eyes, and we're saying our center is equal to distance modulus two, um, because that's gonna be the center, obviously, or, or modulus, what I'm saying, divided by two, is gonna be the middle of our cube. And we're saying the radius, that's how big the eye radius is gonna be. And then we go through a little bit of math here. So circle middle is going to be I multiplied by distance plus center minus radius. Um, and then we're finding out the X. And this is just like a random X that I'm setting um, by just putting it eight pixels up like every time because I don't want to calculate the X. Um, I don't feel like doing that. And then I'm drawing two circles based on circle middle one, circle middle two, and then the radius and a color of black or a uh, color of white, actually. So, or No, that's black. I'm confused. All right. Anyways, with all of that being said and done, and you guys probably pretty confused right now, let's just run and see if anything's actually happening. And you can see we have a cube in the middle of the screen. Yay, so that's all we've done with all this coding um, so far is drawn a cube. So actually not quite because we still, uh, all we have to do now simply to start having that cube move and seeing our key presses work is just do a little bit in the main loop. So let's move down to the main loop now and have a look here what we need to do okay so what i'm going to do is i'm all simply just going to call s dot move which is our snake object every time this main loop runs and what this will allow us to do um, is i want to call this before i redraw window is it's going to go up to that method in snake it's going to check every time that we run the loop if a key has been pressed if it has we're going to move accordingly and remember that in this move loop here it moves all of the objects for us so it moves all those cube objects 
Um, and then we're just drawing the grid, we're drawing everything in this redraw function. So it'll just display that and update that to the screen. So let's see here. And we get an error. Tuple object is not callable. Self dot pause zero plus self dot there next. Um, all right, one second, guys. Oh, it's because I've used curl. Okay, so apparently I am an idiot and I forgot to add an equal sign here. So the issue was simply that this looked something like this. Then I changed it to square brackets when all I needed to do was put an equal sign like this. And now we should be up and we're working. So to reiterate the line here it, that the issue is at, you guys probably saw this when I coded it, to be honest, um, is in move, in cube, it's near the top of the program. All you have to do is change this, add an equal sign between this, like the bracket and the pause. So now that we run it, we can see that we have a moving object and that we can move up, down, left, right, etc., so on and so forth like that. Okay, so play around with that for a second. And now we'll get into uh, adding cubes and we're actually almost done. Uh, we just need to add the, that add cube function uh, message box a little bit in the main loop and then we'll be finished. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is that's all great, we're moving around, but we need to add stuff to our cube, right? Like we need to progress the game. So to do this, we are going to uh, generate what I wanna call a random snack that we're gonna place on the screen that our snake can't eat. So the way that we do this, I'm just gonna say positions equals item dot body. And this item, oops, shouldn't be item, should be item. It's just gonna be a snake object. I don't know why I'm calling it item, but that's what I'm calling it. Um, and we're simply just gonna set like a new list equal to um, that list or so on, okay? So now we're gonna say while well, true, capital T, we're gonna do X equals random dot rand range. And if you haven't imported random yet, make sure you do that. And Y equals random dot rand range rows. And rows again should be um, global. So let's just make sure that this works. So global rows like that. And then after this, we're gonna say if, I don't know how I just typed that, but the length of, and I'm doing something fancy here and I'll explain what this does in a second. Okay, so I know I just typed uh, this stuff that probably makes absolutely no sense to you guys if you haven't been using Python for a little bit, but pretty much what this is gonna do is we're gonna get a list of a filtered uh, list and we're gonna see if any of the positions are the same as um, like the current position of the snake pretty well. So what we're doing is we're saying that uh, we wanna make sure that we're not gonna put a snack on top of the snake. Because if we have a really long snake, the chance of that, that happens is actually somewhat high. And I didn't do this when I first coded the game. So what happened is when you have your snake moving around the screen, all of a sudden the snack would pop up, but it's like on the tail of the snake, um, which you don't want. So what this is doing, and just type it out, you don't really have to understand it, is we're saying this this means a function, uh, Z, and we're just checking if the Z.position uh, is equal to uh, XY. So if it's equal to x, y, which is the position we just generated here by getting two random numbers, so x and y, um, then we're going to have to do this again. So we say continue and else we break like that. And then I'm just gonna, simply going to return in a tuple or a tuple, whatever you want to call it, x, y. Okay, so this is confusing, but um, you can do this in like a much longer way with a for loop where you pretty much loop through every position in this list, you check it against X and Y, um, you see if it's the same, if it's the same, then do this loop again, otherwise you break and you return X, Y. That's all we're doing in there uh, to generate a random snack. Any message box, you're gonna leave that. And in here now, what we're gonna, okay, so now that I've created this, uh, this random snack function, what I need to do is I need to use it. So I'm just gonna create a new object and we're gonna call this snack. And it's going to be equal to another cube, right? Because we want to have the same uh, functionality. We want to be able to draw it, uh, possibly move it around, right? So we're just going to create a new cube object. We're going to give it a position of a random snack, which is going to be something like this. Oops. Random snack. And the random snack, I believe, oh, it takes a row and an item. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it row, or rows, and we'll just give it our item, which is going to be S. 
Um, and then after that, what else do we need for cube?